Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Ari Shearson podcast episode. In this one, I bring to you my friend Collins Amwari, who is actually a Minnesota entrepreneur like myself, who is young, yet has experienced more success than a lot of entrepreneurs out there, most entrepreneurs out there in the e-commerce space, specifically with Amazon high ticket drop shipping, which is quite interesting. And I tried to get as deep as possible when it comes to his strategies, his journey to inspire you, to teach you and provide as much value as possible. So hopefully you enjoyed this interview. If you want to support the podcast, make sure that you check out some of the links in the description. Use our Shopify link to start your own Shopify store. And also make sure you go to akemilab.com to check out some of our products or services and just overall value. We got a lot of cool stuff in there, our Discord server. So do those things if you want to support these videos. And without further ado, here's the interview. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to have you here, man. I'm glad we could squeeze in some time to talk and go through your journey and provide some value. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, I do an intro for these videos, so you don't need to introduce mm-hmm. yourself necessarily. But I want to start off right away with a little bit about your journey, man. You know, you're you're a young guy. So I want to know where did online business begin for you? Yeah, no, so pretty much my name is Collins Omwery. Online business began, be, started for me when I was relatively young. I tell people 13, but it's actually 12. So because people don't even believe they're like, okay, maybe a 13 year old, but a 12 year old, it doesn't make sense. But pretty much it got started. Um, an African Kenyan immigrant came over here when I was about three, four years old. And football back in Africa is a huge, huge, huge part of our entire culture. So pretty much I loved playing the game, playing it outside with my friends and also playing the video games when mm-hmm. it was too hot or too cold in Minnesota where I'm up here. And I loved FIFA. I don't know the particular year it was. I think it was either FIFA 15 or FIFA 16. I needed the latest video game. So I asked my father, hey, could you buy me the game? And unfortunately he was like, no, I can give you $50, but I can't give you the $100 for the game. So he gave me the $50 and I was like, okay, let me figure out if I can buy this game. And I went on every single website and I couldn't find it for sale. Amazon was selling it at 100. Um, GameStop was selling it at 100. All these websites were selling it at 100. But lo and behold, it, I found it on Walmart for $50. But I was like, wait, wait, wait. Instead of buying this game, why don't I go out there and sell it on the marketplaces? So I saw oh, easiest marketplace to open was Amazon because Amazon back then they wanted to get so many sellers. They were struggling with trying to get sellers. So I signed up, got an approved within a matter of a few days and listed the game. Within a matter of a second, I saw a sale. I was reloading my page. I'm like, wait, 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 is this real? Is this real? I'm like, wait, it's sold and it's sold again and again, and again, and again. Within a matter of two weeks, I was able to do over $10,000 in sales, all arbitraging the product from Walmart, shipping it directly to the consumers on Amazon, and making the profit. But unfortunately, the whole strategy of doing arbitrage directly from Walmart to the consumers is completely against Amazon's terms and services. So my account got shut down, they took like, half of my money, they put it on hold. And anyone who is an Amazon seller just knows how horrible they can be with money holes. It's just a horrible experience. But that didn't kill the entrepreneurship spirits in me. I went out there and I was like, oh, let me try different things. I tried doing print on demand. I tried making t-shirts with uh, nurses and firefighters. I tried making hats that failed. I tried drop shipping low ticket products from China over here to America on like a Shopify website that failed. And I kept on failing and failing and failing, but it wasn't until I hit 16 or 17 when I was like, I need to make this e-commerce thing work. What am I going to do to make this work? And that's when it really hit me. I'm like, wait, I'm horrible at advertising. I am just quite frank ass at advertising. I don't know how to tell you, Hey, this water is the Collins water Buy this water for a markup. I just struggled with advertising, but that's when I realized I was like, wait, when I was 12, 13, what worked for me almost instantly, it was selling someone else's product, FIFA being in a sense, the middleman, the retailer, and now selling it on the marketplace. So I was like, Hmm, 
it worked. It's just the way that I was sourcing the products was completely wrong. Instead of going on Walmart or eBay trying to find the product for a low cost, why don't I go directly to, let's say, FIFA, directly to, let's say, um, Colgate, these brands that have already established, spent hundreds of millions of dollars in marketing their products to household names. Why don't I go out there and be, in a sense, kind of like the retailer, the middleman? So I was like, okay, boom, let me try to get in contact with these brands. And a lot of people ask me, okay, how do you get in contact with these brands? When you literally just look at every single product, they all have a phone number right there that you can call. Made a list of 100 different brands just going around my house. Oh, cereal. Oh, this. And started calling up these brands. This little 16, 17-year-old kid. Hey, I want to be a wholesaler. I want to buy your products. End the call. Hey, I want to be a wholesaler. I want to buy your products. They just kept on ending and ending the call. But after I think it was like 40 or 50 brands, that's when I realized, oh, they want to hear this. Oh, they want to hear this. And eventually, boom, my first brand accepted me. And now I just kept on doing the exact same strategy. I was doing this as I was 13. But now I'd order the products directly to my house, sell them on Amazon, and that's how I got started in that game. Crazy, man. Crazy. I love that story. That's such a good one. And that's so clever of you actually to then just think about, hey, let me just start calling up every brand. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have a lot of conversations with people and I always try to figure out like, what is this, the common trait amongst everybody? And I think one of the most powerful traits that like successful people I talk to have is resourcefulness. So just like, yeah, taking it upon yourself to figure it out basically. So now from then to now you've, you know, you you've done a bunch of other ventures still mainly on amazon so how did that lead to then getting into high ticket uh on amazon since that's one of the things that you do now you know so pretty much i don't know i really struggled with the whole ideology of okay there's some people in the e-commerce space or even the amazon fba space that are going out there and selling a water bottle and they're making a few pennies off of it it's just the amount of effort that it would take for me to close the brand and to get the product sale sold i was like wait people are selling two thousand dollar fireplaces on amazon it's the same amount of effort to secure the brand so why don't I put that same amount of effort to secure the brand into now higher ticket brands where yes, it might still be at 10% profit margin. Let's say if there was a 10% profit margin, but 10% profit margin on a thousand dollar product compared to 10% margin on a $10 product, it's completely different. So that was where I switched my whole entire focus from looking at low ticket products to looking at high ticket products. And the sector that I really excelled in was the appliance and furniture sector where I saw People buy appliances every single day because a lot of people, they will look a little tip for your viewers right now. When you are looking at what to even sell on Amazon, really look at high ticket products. Why I say that? Because a lot of the tools like let's say Helium or Smart Scout, they don't really account for the sale volume of these high ticket products because Amazon ranks their sales based on what is known as BSR, best seller rank. And a water bottle, it will sell 100,000 times in a month. Let's say they're doing $10,000 in that month, but that high ticket product might only sell five times a month. If it's $2,500, that's still over $10,000 in sales, but it'll have a $800,000 bestseller rank. It's still selling, but these tools like Helium 10, SmartScope, they don't pick it up. So there's this huge blue ocean to a lot of products that people can sell on Amazon that they're really not looking at. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's a big arbitrage opportunity right there. I feel like, um, so I, it's cool that you capitalize on it, and you know now I've done millions in revenue doing that. How have you ever tested the waters applying that to Shopify, or have you always stayed in that marketplace? One hundred percent Shopify as well for high ticket, especially furniture is huge, and not even with paid acquisition because you have to remember the brands that we're going after these are brands like let's say samsung ge these are established brands if you can implement an seo strategy i literally launched a brand new store just last week with this brand new furniture line that i got access to and just did simple seo optimization added better images better titles just simple work this is stuff you can go on youtube and learn how to do seo optimized titles and I was able to get 
my first sale in 24 hours without spending a single dollar on ads. Working with these brands, because they're already getting traffic. So now it's like capitalizing on the pie they've already created. And I'm just getting a small chunk of that pie without spending money on ads. Because remember, even on Amazon, I'm not spending any money on ads. I'm just securing the brand and selling their products on Amazon. That is so clever. And now, I mean, this is a bit random, but I've been seeing on TikTok shop, I have access to a lot of TikTok reps and I'm on a lot of calls with TikTok reps these days. And one of the things that they've been pushing to us a bit is uh, Amazon attribution. So they want us to actually start driving some TikTok ads traffic to Amazon. So I'm curious, do you know of like how that could blend in with this high ticket opportunity? Like would you ever run ads to an Amazon listing? The biggest thing that I will tell your viewers as far as running ads to your listing, if it is your own brand, 100%. Because a lot of people will run ads to, let's say, a brand that they might not own. And the biggest challenge with that is Amazon really doesn't provide you with data as far as clicks. And then the biggest trick, this is for brand owners who have their brands registered on Amazon, you're able to do a little trick known as the referral bonus deduction, where for any outside traffic sales that you bring, whether that's Google ads, TikTok ads, you're able to drop your referral fee Amazon fees is 15% down by 10% to 5%. So if you're running that, let's say for a brand like Samsung and I'm pushing ads to my listing, my Samsung listing, since I don't own Samsung product, it's really not worth it. But if you actually own your own brand, it is huge and Amazon will rank you higher and you'll, they'll drop your fees. Dude, that's super yeah. interesting. I, I think you briefly touched on that last time we talked, but I mm -hmm. it like just now clicked. Uh, that's actually extremely powerful. I think a lot of brands are going to start doing that then. I'm curious now, you know, jumping into, uh, you know, more marketplaces opportunity now, and let's talk a little bit about TikTok shop. So, you know, um, TikTok shop is a little bit of the opposite where it's like a lot of low ticket products. However, it's only the beginning. Do you think people will start selling high ticket on TikTok shop or have you seen it already? 100%. I've been seeing so many different furniture companies just blowing up. I wouldn't say the high ticket of, let's say, an average order value of like $2,500, but that $100 to $500 range is still a huge, huge, huge. I was seeing different play sets for sale, different like these LED mirrors that are $100, $200. People are actually buying these products because a lot of people neglect to realize that, yes, your conversion rates on high ticket, it's not going to be the average of three, four, but even a 0.5, a 1% conversion is still huge for high ticket because these are high average order value products. And I'm going to see more and more high ticket products going on TikTok for sure. Totally. I, I actually have Calo data pulled up right now and I'm, I just have it right here and I see those number six biggest brand on TikTok shop right now. It's called My Depot and it's a furniture retailer. 100%. So there is right. an opportunity. Crazy, crazy. That is crazy exciting. And then, you know, that, what What do you think about TikTok shop as an affiliate? Do you think that's a, a good side hustle these days? Are you involved in that at all? Mm -hmm. So as far as TikTok shop, I'm not involved on the side of affiliates. I'm more inside of the seller angle. As far as getting other people to becoming your affiliate, I think it is hands down the easiest, easiest way to make money. Because I have so many people in my community that'll complain, oh, it's such hard work, you have to post three times a day. If you can spend, just everyone right now, go on your phone right now and look at your hours spent on TikTok and Instagram. Add that up, let's say it's three hours. If you can just cut that in half and spend that other half where you're scrolling, becoming a consumer, to become a producer and actually provide value, there's no reason why you can't make an extra two, three, four, even $10,000 per month. Huge. Yeah, that's actually extremely true. I tested it out myself because I, I know, you know, I, I hire a lot of creators for brand stuff, but, mm -hmm. and I've seen, you know, on Twitter, all these creators posting their crazy screenshots. So I bought the, one of the top TikTok shop products and I mm -hmm. bought a TikTok shop account that had like uh, enough followers to be an affiliate. And I literally just made six videos reacting to popular videos of this product, like not even with my face in it, just with the product like this on the other side of like the duet. And I made 
two sales from like 3000 views in six videos. So I was like mind blown of how easy this actually is. So I strongly recommend, yeah, anybody to test it out. If like you said, that's a really great perspective when it comes to social media, like how much just out of curiosity, how much time do you spend browsing social media these days? I feel like for me, when I'm on social media, it's a lot of research, understanding what other people are doing. I'm more about the reason why I'm not making, let's say, $10 million a month. It's just because I don't know what I need to do. So if I can go on social media and search, because what a lot of people neglect to realize, there is so much information out there on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. People will literally give their game away for free. It's just you going out there and directing your attention towards the right things. So I would say on average, let's say maybe two hours a day, two to three hours a day. That's fire. I That's one of the great things about what you said earlier too, about like just becoming even a fraction of your time, putting that into being like a producer, because then it actually makes the other time that you spend on the, on the platform like more productive, right? So same with me like i actually spend a decent amount of time on instagram on TikTok, just like browsing and sure a lot of it is entertainment but almost every time i get something out of it where i'm like oh this is like an interesting style of content or this is an interesting hook or just whatever right any sort of information that could be relevant to your journey so you know that's that's the advantage of being a producer is that now the time that you do spend browsing is actually productive so um now I'm curious, you know, you have this community. What do you think is one of the, since I mentioned to you about the resourcefulness, what do you think is one of the things that you've seen is a common trait amongst people in your community that actually succeed, that actually like basically make it? I know it's so surface level because everyone hears it and you'll be like, ah, he's saying <laughs> the thing that everyone says. But when I am telling you consistency is huge because these algorithms especially like tiktok and instagram they work on a consistency basis in the beginning a lot of people were like oh i'm at 100 views oh i'm at 200 views but you'll stay consistent stay consistent and then boom you'll get bumped up to oh i'm at a thousand views stay consistent stay consistent oh i'm averaging 10,000 views stay consistent oh ultra viral video yes of course there will be those cases where people boom their second video they're getting 2 million 5 million 10 million views but i personally believe those who receive success so quickly they don't learn the skill of being consistent so their next video is now 200 views and they're here they're like shaking they're crying they're like why am i not making any money why is this not working cuz i strongly believe if when i started making money at a super young age and i just kept on being success 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 and then I failed and I never understood what it takes to actually build that endurance to stay consistent. It, it's not even worth it. So staying consistent is the biggest, biggest thing that I see within my community as far as those who are actually making it past, let's say $10,000 a month and those who give up within a matter of a few weeks. Yeah, dude, I love that. I mean, like you said, for some people that may sound generic, but it's so true. And I think for me, I've always like, I just love being consistent. And even for example, with the example that I gave you with me testing this affiliate thing, I saw, okay, from 3000 views, like collectively, I got two sales. So if I was to really go all in on this, like normally, then I would just like, I'd be, even if I got 200 vi uh, views on a video, I would think, oh, well, if I get 3000 views total, which in that case would be like, I don't know, like 15 videos, then, okay, I just need to make 15 videos to make more sales. And then it compounds. That's what people don't understand is that consistency compounds. So even if you get 200 views on 30 videos, maybe on the 31st video, you'll start going, you'll get, you know, a thousand views and then that will trigger another video to get a thousand views. And then boom, you just like, you know, compounded your success. 100% because I feel like a lot of people, they expect, they want to make more money than a doctor in a week. I'm like, it's not possible. The amount of time that it takes to actually go out there and learn the skill that it takes to actually make that level of money. How many years does a doctor go to school? Two, three, four, five, six, almost 10 years. You think, oh, just posting five videos now, you're going to figure out the secret sauce on how to make a million dollars a month. It's not really 
possible. So that's why I tell a lot of people within my community, just the one who wins is the one who stays in the game. The longer you can just stay in the game, you will win at the end. I love that. That's so true. I mean, and that's the great thing about an entrepreneur, like entrepreneurship in general is like, the game never ends. So if you can just never give up, then you'll literally never fail. That's awesome. So um, out of curiosity, then do you expect people or brands to potentially start allowing other people to sell their products similar to how they do on Amazon, but on TikTok shop? Do you think that's something that's coming? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is some inside information for your viewers. TikTok is actually pushing people to be able to sell products on their platform without brand authorization. There's a little glitch going on right now. It's a glitch, but they're actually about to switch it over to where TikTok is trying to get to a, a space where they now have ASIN level products. Because the issue that's been happening right now is, let's say, this particular cologne by Gucci. There's 30 different people selling that product. What they want to do is build kind of like a buy box situation where it's that product, there's 10, 20, 30 other sellers, whoever has the lowest price, whoever has the fastest shipping wins that buy box. Do we know how they're going to do the buy box situation? No, not yet. But what I would do is any Amazon seller, Shopify seller that has authorization to brands, that's why I say brands are huge and getting access to those brands are huge because now TikTok, Earlier last year, when I started selling products on TikTok, you could sell anything. You could sell a product that you found on the street. People would just buy. Now consumers on TikTok are being more aware of the brands that they're purchasing from. Before, they were ready to buy anything for a dollar, two dollars. Now people want to spend that extra money for that branded cologne, for that branded workout supplement, for that branded product. So you can get access to those brands that are already selling and doing huge volume on Amazon or Shopify, that is a huge opportunity for you to become a third party seller on the TikTok shop marketplace. Damn, that's some sauce right there for real. That's actually really good. I mean, I, I like that concept of taking an existing brand that already has all this like virality or not even virality, but just like market dominance and then just capitalizing on that to just take a slight piece of the pie. I mean, if a brand's doing 500 million dollars and you take you know 10 percent of that like that's a huge huge business like that's massive um how do you get like brand authorizations is it really just like calling people up and kind of pitching yourself so pretty much there's so many different ways of looking at it the way that I like to look at it, I'm very analytical. I like to look at it as like a numbers game because so many people will find like that instant success. The first company they call, boom, they become approved and they, they think, oh, every other company is going to be like that. What I've typically seen for every 100 companies that I pick up the phone and call them, the conversion rate on closing is an average of like one to 2%. So for every 100 brands that you call, you might get one or two. And with that one or two brands, that's a huge opportunity for you to get that small piece of the pie. So just looking at it as a numbers game, as the more people I call, the more chance I have of getting that brand. It might be your 59th brand. It might be your 99th brand. It might be your second brand. You never really know. But if you just call five companies expecting a deal to get closed, it's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, that <laughs> makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. You told me a little bit about, yeah, um, you know, you, you got a little retail location here uh, in Minneapolis. So you could kind of say that that's your HQ. Would you ever yeah. consider like expanding upon that? Or do you think online is always going to be like the way? Online. Online is the way. Mm -hmm. So for the viewers, a lot of brands will want to be like, oh, do you have a physical location? Do you have a store presence? Because they don't want to work with a 13 year old kid who is just drop shipping. They want to make sure you're a legitimate business. A little loophole that I would use when I was a little younger and I didn't have the money to pay a lease for a physical brick and mortar location was any, let's say you want to be in the hair niche or the beauty niche, any girl that has a physical location that is doing, let's say salon, any like nail care, 
you can talk to them and say that's your aunt that's your mother that's someone who you're friends with talk to them be like hey i just want to use your address as proof of my business address and the brand is not going to go there bring fbi agents to see hey where where is this like what's happening as long as they can physically say oh this is a nail salon and you want to sell beauty based products it makes sense so that's a little trick that i used when i was super young to get access to some of these brands that's smart again that's so resourceful cuz i'm sure people i mean there's so many businesses out there and i feel like you could even work out a deal with somebody like and say hey like i'll sell a bunch of products in this cat like you know let's say it's a a hair care brand maybe they already have a salon and you're like hey we can split profits if i can use your address as like a, our hub I don't know. There's so many different creative things that you could do if, if people are just, if they believe in themselves, really. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious to know a little bit about, you know, how this journey of entrepreneurship was for you while being in school. Like, did you have a lot of pressure from your parents, for example, to do really good in school? I'm asking because there's a lot of young people in my audience, too, that are probably going through that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like the biggest thing for me, because... Uh, I I don't want to say I was mad at my parents or I hated my parents but I never saw or understood until I got older the fact that the reason why they weren't so supportive of my business because they cared for me. You have to think about it like this. If your parents are the age of let's say 30, 40, 50, 10, 20 years ago there was no such thing as e-commerce. This e-commerce thing Honestly, to them, it could be a fad. It could be something that's just coming and going. So 10 years ago, when I'm like, mom, dad, I want to do e-commerce. I want to do this. To them, it's like, what are you talking about? The only real way of making money is going what? Going to college, working at a nine to five, corporate America, climbing up the ladder. Because they don't see e-commerce as something that's been here for 10, 15, 20 years. It's not been that big for that long. So... I would just get super devastated and like I would just be mad at why don't they see why don't they see but then once it hit me I was like why are they like that it's because they want to make sure that I can have stable income and stable income is through a nine to five so as long as you can be able to show your parents mom dad look I'm still in school I completely advocate for people to stay in school because you can mix school and business you 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 hang out with your friends you go to party you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, there are so many things that you still do in your life and you still go to school. So can you not spend two, three, four hours a day towards your business? A lot of these businesses, you're not spending 10, 12, 30, 40, 50 hours at that business. You just need that extra hour or two. And especially if this is a side hustle, for example, becoming an affiliate marketer on TikTok shop, that's a model that you can spend an hour or two a day to get started and start understanding what is it like to advertise? What is it like to do this? And then you can go out there, mom and dad, look, for the last three months, I'm going to make an extra thousand dollars a month. I really want to take this full time. That's how I would go at it for all those young viewers as far as parents either not being supportive or them not seeing the vision that you see. Prove to them first that it can work and you can stay consistent. And there's no reason why your parents will not support you after that. Very true. And I think that will also give you like self-confidence that you can do it because it tr like one of the biggest things people don't think about is like the emotional component of being an entrepreneur. Like, you know, one day you made money, the next day you don't make money. You're like, oh, shit, it's over. Like you can it, it can be, get very emotional. So I totally agree. I think even for people who are older, like not just quitting your job, <laughs> for example, like continuing your job and just doing this on the side, like you can find the time. Uh, we've all done it and plenty of people do it. You, you can find the time to work on your business, on your side hustle while you live your life. I mean, even like you mentioned, most people are spending three to five hours a day just scrolling social media. So um, there's definitely time in the day that, keep, that people can use and students um, as well. They can definitely spend more time doing that on the side. Mm -hmm. 100%. I completely agree. Because the way that I look at it as far as how to become successful in business. I believe, I think, I don't know if it's Alex Hermosi who says this, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but they said business is kind of like a triangle. So a triangle is the strongest shape. At the top of the triangle, you have expertise. To the left, you have time. 
and to the right, you have money. In order to build a successful business, you want to get that triangle. You want to have the expertise, you have the money, and you want to have the time. So you have to think about it, where am I on the triangle? A lot of people getting started, no one has expertise. You've never done this, so you don't have expertise. A lot of people don't have money. So what are you going to lean towards? You're going to spend the time, whether that's an hour or two a day, your weekend instead of going to party, to learn the expertise, which leads you to making the money. And that's how you build your triangle. So figure out, do you have a lot of money? You can invest and buy an e-commerce store and just have someone else run it. But a lot of people don't have money, especially they're young viewers. So spend that time to gain that expertise to build that supplemental income. I love that. So, you know, we can probably start getting closer to a wrap up here. I'm curious, is there any particular thing when it comes to TikTok shops? Since I know that you're pushing that a bit, uh, that you think people need to know in order to succeed as a seller there? Are, like, are there any loopholes that you know of or, or is it just, what does that process look like in your opinion to succeed on TikTok shop? You know, so a lot of people who are getting started on TikTok shop, I would say there are two things that is going to make or break you. So many people say your tactics on how you make the video matter, your edits matter. And I'll be honest with you, it is your product. Have a product that sells itself because so many people will be like, oh, this is a winning product. I was seeing this lady who's talking about, oh, this coat hanger. I'm like, is, are you are you going to just pull out your credit card? I, mean, I need that coat hanger. No. So you can post a gazillion videos. You can do so many different things. But if people are not going to want to pull out their credit card and want to buy right now, it makes no sense. So finding a product that just evokes people's emotions where they're like, wow, I need to buy this product. It's not about your pricing. It's not about how you make your videos. It's just finding that product that sells itself is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that I'll say as far as finding success on TikTok shop. And then the second thing as far as TikTok shop is pricing. So many people getting started in the e-commerce game, even on Amazon, on Shopify, people want to make 50, 60, 100% profit margins. Like it makes no sense. Get those first sales, even if it is 5% profit margin, even if it is 10%. I have so many students in our private Discord community who'll be like, Collins, I'm getting no sales. I'm like, oh, what product it is? It's a jar opener. They're buying it for $5, selling it for 30. I'm like, what is this? This makes no sense. And I feel like so many people getting started in e-commerce, you're not getting sales or you're having such a horrible conversion rate. Why? Because you're just overpricing your products. You have to think about it like this. The top companies in the world, for example, the top retailers in the world, Home Depot, Lowe's, go to their earning reports. It's public. They're making on average 2 to 5%. It's a volume game. It's about how can I sell this again and again and again and again? So how do you sell it again and again again? Lowering your price so that more people are inclined to pulling out their credit card to purchasing it. So those are the two tips that I'll give for everyone getting started in the TikTok shop. Yeah, that's huge. I think a lot of people don't really think about like the logic behind what they're selling. So you're totally right. Like a good offer can literally be just good pricing. Uh, but then another thing that you mentioned that I, I'm a huge believer in is that the product is everything because you know, there's a lot of debate always on, on, you know, Twitter, for example, about like, oh, the, the video is, is what makes the product sell or, you know, like the winning ad is everything. Um, but to be honest, I've always thought, and I've experienced this, some people work so hard to make a product work and it's, it's just never going to work because nobody cares about the product. And then on mm -hmm. the other hand, you got a guy that's like made the worst ad of all time but it's printing because it's a product that everybody wants. Like the demand is there. Um, so I think that's where the consistency really plays in. Like just testing products sometimes. Yeah. You know, your first 10 products may just be an uphill battle, but I'm always at least personally looking into opportunities that are not an uphill battle that are a downhill battle where I'm like, you know, I'm surfing this trend. Like, so it's easy. Um, I think if it's not easy, 
something's, you know, your product may not be the right product. Mm -hmm. You know, hundred percent. I agree because there's so many people in our community who expect that first product to be a winner. I'll be honest with you, your first product getting started in e-commerce, it may or may not be a winner. 99% of the time, it may not be a winner. And how are you going to get to that winner? It's a numbers game. It might be 100 products. It might be 200 products. Just go out there and test. And what I love about getting started on TikTok shop, guess how much money it costs for you to test a product? Zero. It costs zero dollars. You can buy the product on, let's say, Amazon or wherever you're sourcing it from, AliExpress. If it doesn't work, you just return it and buy another product, make videos, see if it works. That's why I highly advocate for starting your business super duper lean. Because so many people are going out there, starting their TikTok shop, ordering products from Alibaba. They're ordering products in bulk to get them shipped here slow down slow down if you can go on websites like temu amazon order even 10 units to your house and just get started with 10 products that is the way to go test it out make that first sale first prove the model first because i see so many people saying oh e-commerce is a scam e-commerce is a scam because they're going to alibaba ordering a ten thousand dollar minimum purchase order and i'm like what are you doing? You've never, I had a few friends of mine who bought these t-shirts, never have sold a t-shirt before in their lives. Like, oh, we're going to become millionaires. I'm like, you've never done this before. One, get the proven concept first and then go out there and purchase products in bulk because that is killing so many people in the game right now. I love that. And I think even when you study the biggest brands like Facebook or even Apple, like they never struggled with like pushing the product it was like the opposite they just created a product that everybody wanted so it just caught fire like crazy um so totally true i think too many people get emotionally attached to a product or emotionally attached to something and they, they just like w need to see it work but that's just not how it works sometimes not to say that it's not possible to make something work obviously it is but again it depends on what you want i'm definitely looking for the easy wins um so what are uh, what what's some last words that you want to say and where can people find you and your community? That's important. Mm -hmm. You know, some last words. This is for all of the younger entrepreneurs out there. I want to tell you this one thing. You have to think about e-commerce or just business as a whole as a race. We are all racing against each other. I'm racing against you. We're all fighting for that, let's say, first spot position, gold medal in Olympics right now in Paris. So what are you going to do to win that race? Are you going to spend more time testing products? Are you going to test different ad sets? Are you going to, you, it's all about what are you doing before the match starts? Because once you launch that product and it fails, you went to the race without preparing, without taking your supplements, without running an extra, without doing those workouts that it takes to launch a successful brand. So do the workouts. Think about it as you're a lifter. You have to practice your lifts before you go to that national championship. And that is how you'll become successful in e-commerce. Put in the reps. I agree. Mm -hmm. And then where can people find you and your community? Yeah, no, so 100%. So we have a completely free community with a completely free mini course on school. You can follow me on Instagram. It's going to be Colin, C-O-L-L-I-N-S underscore O-M-W-E-R-I. Click the link in my bio, a completely free school community. And if everyone wants additional help, mentorship as far as getting started selling products on Amazon or TikTok shop, we offer mentorship services where I can sit on calls one-on-one -on -one with you showing you what are you doing wrong because there's some people out there that yes you can watch all the youtube videos in the world but you just need that extra push and that extra look hey is this working is this not working or what am i doing wrong and i'll dm me i'd love to help any of you guys get started amazing man amazing well i'm excited to you know continue this relationship hopefully in the future we can you know maybe you can come in my community too and i'll go into yours maybe provide some exchange of value in there but yeah, man, I appreciate your time and thanks for the call. 100%. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Awesome, bro. Talk soon. Bye-bye.